a magnetic shaker light, the idea being that you shake it to actually charge it, and uh, a magnet flying perhaps and forwards inside a coil charges up battery inside. And licorice from, well, Lacris by Sambo Iceland, which was kindly sent by Magnus and Alex. And this is, a can you, you could almost think of it as a licorice M&M. They don't exist, but I don't think they exist. But it's basically a sugar shell filled with chocolate here, and then sort of licorice filled with chocolate again. The Icelandic uh, candy, their, their sweets are basically a lot of licorice and chocolate and Mars pan and stuff like that. They're very nice. So very grateful for those. This uh, flashlight comes from James, who also sent the alligator jerky, which was uh, very pleasant. And I remember when these came out, they're not a new thing. They came out a long time ago, and the claims they made were absolutely ridiculous. The idea is, we've got a coil here, and the first two units had a, a big new Demi Man Boron magnet inside them. And the original version had another magnet at each end with the opposite polarity so it, it basically it suspend the magnet in the middle and as you shook it it couldn't smash into the ends but these ones have replaced that with uh, rubber stops and the claims were made that you know if you shook it for a minute which you know a minute's a long time when you're shaking one of these they claimed it would last all day or all night and it showed people fixing their cars and quick shake and off we go, we're fixing stuff. In reality, it doesn't really live up to the expectations of that. Um, I got a real one and no matter how much you shook it, it just it ran for a short length of time but gradually decreased in intensity until it just petered out again. It wasn't that great and this one is a... Uh, not very high intensity, but there's no hope of charging this one up because, like many of the others, this one is completely fake. You can tell that by holding a magnet near, and if that, this was a real neodymium magnet, it would just be getting really excited, but in reality, nah. This one's got a slug of metal inside it, and you can also see from the coil that the coil looks a bit sparse in terms of the windings. So let's take it apart and see what's inside. The end on the screws... And as is come the construction of these, you've got this body that comes out uh, from the middle. And there's the there's the big magnet, which looks suspiciously. Let's uh, let's get a close up on this. Let's zoom down. It looks like a distorted slug of metal that they've just chopped off a bar. It's not very good. It's not even convincingly magnety. So um, there's the little rubber end stop they use in these. It's quite a rigid one, but uh, they've also, just because this is purely for look, I'm surprised they didn't just wrap a stick around it, but this winding, it, they've only wound one layer on, and in the originals, it was like a really thick layer because it, to get any effect from that magnet flying backwards and forwards, you needed a heavy winding. And they've brought the, the windings up here, the coils, Let's uh, get the circuit board off. Well, let's get the batteries out. What's the bet that these are not rechargeable? They're going to be CR2032s. CR2032s. So you can recharge this by putting new batteries in. The Where's uh, another screwdriver? Let's uh, whip these screws out. And take a look at the circuitry on the board. Well, I can see already there's not much circuitry on the board. Has it even been designed? It looks as though it has. It has been designed for use with the real thing by the layout of the tracks because I'll, I'll draw the schematic of the real thing. But the two windings coming from this uh, coil are going to one solder pad. They've just put them there to part them out the way and they've not even cropped them. They've just splunged them together. So absolutely zero effect whatsoever. Might as well get rid of that because it's just not doing anything. Let me do do you out the schematic for this. Yeah, that's just a slap in the face, isn't it? It really is. Just makes a mockery of it when they've done that. As it is, it's the contact here. It's the LED. No resistor or anything that would have had a resistor in the early, the earlier version. You can see the position for it there. Um, and that is just going straight. Oh, actually, was one of those wires actually doing something in the sense that it was probably connecting to the batteries? Oh, and it was onto it was onto this here. It's just there. Uh, when it screws on, it just shoves it against the pad. Okay. Um. Right. So I'll draw you that actual schematic of the real thing. It's not that complicated. Pen, and we'll just zoom down onto there. 
So uh, the real thing, let's uh, zoom in this a little bit, would have had the coil with the magnet flying backwards and forwards. Keep in mind that with a generator that you're turning the handle, the magnet is shooting through that coil lots and lots of times. With this, it's literally going thumpy, 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 thumpy. So it's, just, it's yeah, it doesn't generate much. They still sell them. I just checked on eBay. They're going for astronomical prices and they're rubbish. If you've got one of them, leave a comment down below. Tell us what you think of it. It might be worth digging it out, revisiting it. it. might even be worth finding if it's actually a real one or not. You can tell that from the components because the schematic looks like this. You've got the coil with the big chunky magnet in there flying backwards and forwards to uh, keep cutting through the field and generate the, the uh, current in the windings. We've got a bridge rectifier, which in this case would have been made with discrete diodes. The output of that would have been connected probably to an onboard circuit. Uh, it might have been a small battery soldered directly on board or a capacitor. It might have been a capacitor soldered directly on board, but you'd have like a one cell, maybe like an LIR2032, which is the rechargeable version. You'd have had a resistor, a switch or a momentary action button, and then the LED. And the idea here is that... Uh, You'd shake it with enough force to gradually... Everything that came out of this coil would get rectified, so it was the correct polarity, and then it would charge up the capacitor or the battery that was in it. And no uh, overcharge protection, usually in the ones that did have lithiums, because there's no way in hell that you're ever going to be able to shake it unless you actually stuck it on a machine that vibrated that torch backwards and forwards continually. Uh, for hours, you're not going to be able to ever charge that cell up. The... Resistor would have probably been chosen to limit the current to 10 milliamps or something. They didn't, wouldn't want it too high because the capacity is so small. So let's make a guess that that might have been an LIR2032, which is the rechargeable version. It looks just like one of these uh, CR2032s, but it's a bit more expensive. Uh, but it is fully rechargeable. And that is fundamental. It. There's not much else to say. Let's make, make a rough guess at the value of that resistor. Let's calculate that. The battery could theoretically charge up to 3.2 volts. The LED would be 3 volts-ish, you know, let's, well, it should, could theoretically charge up to 4. So let's say 1 divided by um, uh, R equals V over I, 1 divided by, let's say, 10 milliamps, 100 ohm, 10 to 100 ohms, 10 to 100 ohms, just as a token gesture. That's all you can really say about it. So, um, yeah, a lot of these things are fake simply because the Chinese probably realised that it was useless in the first place and they could make more money just by selling a slug of metal that rattles around. It makes me wonder how many people have shaken these for ages with absolutely no result whatsoever because uh, it really just needed a couple of new, well, replaceable, non-rechargeable cells. But there you go. Uh, oh, another thing, it came with quite a powerful lens in the front, so that the small amount of light that did come out created a wee dot on whatever you were pointing at just to maximise it. So uh, these things were just absolute crap, uh, and they're still for sale. Some will be real and some will be fake. Uh, but there you go, the shake torch, not a good idea at all. One little addition to this video. The magnet flying backwards and forwards, you can hear it in this, it's not very loud in fact, it's, uh, it's got softening at each end. But there is a coil in here, and it's got a magnet again. Uh, let's see if I can feel that magnet with another... Where's that going to be? Where's it going to be? Oop. There it is. So the magnet uh, is in here, and it does work as a little generator, but because this only draws microamps, uh, this one's actually, it works really well as a uh, shake generator because um, generally speaking, if you've left it sitting for a while, it will have discharged and all you have to do to wake it up again is go like that and it's ready to last for ages doing computations again. So uh, the one thing it lets us down is the futuristic little portal here which obscures the edges of the display. It's one of those deep displays that you have to angle it right to get the light in. That's a shame because otherwise, as a calculator, it works very well, particularly with this little shake generator. So it's not a complete waste of time for really low loads, but for things like LED flashlights, which you'd normally think of as a fairly low load, 
it's not even suitable for that. It's just micramps is the only thing it's going to really be useful for. 